Hi, it's Dwyer. DigitalAssetLife.com, a free site. GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. Today is Tuesday, June the 8th, 2021. Bitcoin, as I make this video, is down around $32,000 a coin. Let's talk crypto, but remember, nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. I'm just sharing my trade ideas. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. I want everyone watching this video to think for themselves with their own financial advisors. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now there is a misconception out there right now, right? That cryptocurrency is doing awfully. That um, the price is down almost across the board in the cryptoverse because people are doubting the technology, yada, yada, right? Quite the opposite is true. The reason why I picked this background is because it indicates a celebration. I believe there are few times in Bitcoin's history that have been as upbeat and as positive with as bright a future as right now. Now let's take a moment here, and it needs to be taken, to make a distinction. You know, I know there are many people who feel that Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency and that all of these cryptocurrencies are cut from the same cloth. Uh, most of them operate off of the blockchain, etc. Right? Just understand, there is Bitcoin and then there is everything else. Right? Nothing else compares to Bitcoin. Nothing. Understand, Bitcoin is like gold. You have countries now openly talking about, in places like El Salvador and Paraguay, openly talking about going to a Bitcoin standard, accepting Bitcoin as legal tender. Folks, that's a mind-blowing development in Bitcoin's history. Right, so you have the leader of El Salvador, who is in the majority in El Salvador's government body, in terms of his party, saying that he's going to try to have Bitcoin accepted as legal tender in El Salvador. Don't you think that's going to spread like wildfire through Latin and South America? You understand right now that you have some of the highest adoption rates of cryptocurrency in places like Venezuela. You understand that right now, don't you? Well, just understand, no country is talking about having any other cryptocurrency be a reserve currency, simply because there is no other cryptocurrency on par with Bitcoin, right? Recognize that Bitcoin's hash rate, which exceeds everything else in crypto, gives Bitcoin a security level that exceeds everything else in crypto. Understand some of these coins don't have limited supply, right? They're literally just, you know, computer programs that can just be recreated ad infinitum. That's not Bitcoin. You understand that Bitcoin has scarcity, right? There's a limited amount of Bitcoin. That's why it can be treated like gold. Understand that's happening now. Bitcoin's not relying on some millennial to tell you about what they're developing, right? No, Bitcoin is a finished product right now, let me also point out, too, that Bitcoin is where the institutional money is flowing. I need to have people realize that Guggenheim Partners has about $270 billion in assets under management. 
270 billion dollars well they're launching something called the Guggenheim active allocation fund and they're going to allow you to hold Bitcoin in the fund I need to have people also understand that BlackRock is allowing customers to hold Bitcoin that Bank of New York Mellon has announced plans to hold Bitcoin to provide services for their clients right understand Morgan Stanley their wealth management wing are allowing clients to have access to Bitcoin right folks these are heady times heady times for the cryptocurrency not bad times right you need to look at the price levels as being volatile that's the history of the cryptocurrency but you need to understand that the scarcity the fact that it's a finished product today the fact that it's gaining increasing acceptance as a store of wealth holders don't expect it to be a means of exchange I know there are people like Jack Mallers out there saying hey we can develop the lightning network and stuff like that I'm just telling you that many holders view their Bitcoin holdings like Fort Knox views the gold it holds right it's there to store your wealth you understand you're living in a world with a lot of fiat currency that fluctuates in value and that loses value over time that's the history of fiat currency so Bitcoin gives you the opportunity to store your wealth in a way that doesn't require the kind of storage facility that storing gold would this is digital scarcity it's a mistake a flat-out mistake to compare any cryptocurrency that doesn't have a hard limited supply a maximum supply ceiling with Bitcoin if you're doing that you've missed the point also it's absurd given the fact that Bitcoin's only been around a little bit more than a decade to bemoan the fact that Bitcoin's market price has shown volatility folks that's the way new markets operate right I like the work of Nassim Taleb he's one of my favorite authors I've read several of his books he's a smart guy Elon Musk is a smart guy at different times in the past I've held Tesla stock right both are just flat out raw on Bitcoin what I want everyone watching this video to do is to think for themselves understand intelligent people can disagree on a technology right BlackRock Guggenheim they're on one side of the equation <laughs> Nassim Taleb's on the other side of the equation I don't believe you should follow either group blindly I think you should think in terms of supply and demand limited supply fungibility dependability security that is evidenced by the hash rate and the fact that Bitcoin really has no peers right I've heard from the Ethereum crowd I've made some prior videos and I've heard from the Ethereum crowd and they're upset when I mention blockchains that have higher throughputs that enable you to run more transactions per second than Ethereum right folks there are too many out there now to ignore whether it's Cardano whether it's Solana whether it's EOS they're just too many to ignore I believe this summer is going to be the summer of Cardano and Solana right I believe once people figure out 
that there are several railroads. Once developers in particular figure out that they could develop things with more capability on polka dot, then they can Ethereum. That Ethereum doesn't have a monopoly on smart contract technology. Then it's going to be almost game over for Ethereum. The view many people have right now of a flipping it is just not going to happen. Right? Bitcoin has no competitor like a Solana. Right? They're in different spaces. Bitcoin is a set it and forget it. I have money. I want to convert it to a store of value. I want it to retain value better than the U.S. dollar. The world reserve currency is retaining value. I don't want to be beholden to these academics and these central banks that want to tell me how long an inflationary environment is going to last, as if they know, or who want to tell me that we're not going to have another recession, right? Or who, in interviews, after they've left office, admit that you really couldn't believe them when they were in office because they were pursuing the political agenda of the elected politicians, right? Bitcoin gives you an opportunity to avoid all of that. So just understand, there's Bitcoin and then there's everything else. Right now, things are being mislabeled. We're just calling everything a cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is really a crypto store of value. Right? People who hold Bitcoin, hodlers, understand that it's too valuable to spend Bitcoin on things like a cup of coffee. Right? You're in Bitcoin for the long haul. Let me point out too that you have a lot of people right now accumulating Bitcoin. Understand, where they're sellers, they're also buyers. Right? You have a group out there that's using this opportunity, this price downturn, during this incredibly vibrant atmosphere for Bitcoin, where countries are talking about adopting Bitcoin. Right? You have savvy hodlers like MicroStrategy out there buying Bitcoin. Worse yet, they're even getting authorization to borrow money to buy Bitcoin. If you're a hodler, this is a great time to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin was at $64,000 not too long ago. Now it's dropped 50% in price. As I make this video, it's around $32,000. If you know the history of Bitcoin's price volatility, you understand that this is one of the sales of a lifetime. Right? So, I make this video unapologetically. Right? While some are seeing a crypto that's dropping in value, and keep in mind, it's this way across the board in the cryptoverse. Right? Bitcoin isn't dropping by itself. Several cryptocurrencies, as we call them, are dropping in value, right? As I watch the price drop, I realize this is a vibrant time where Guggenheim and others who could easily drop a billion dollars into the crypto market, right? Doesn't Tesla today have more than a billion and a half dollars in the in Bitcoin right just to understand traditional banking the DeFi world which is different than Bitcoin you shouldn't confuse the two the DeFi world is rapidly replacing legacy finance bankers are being replaced by algorithms and over collateralized loans if you have a good credit history some of these lending services now are whitelisting you 
Folks, that's the future. You're kidding yourself if you think we're going to go back to the past. Generation Z and Millennials are simply too aware, too knowledgeable to believe that the old status quo that has European governments as well as the American government in a sea of red, that has so much debt in Japan that you're talking about more than 200% of the GDP, right? Millennials are too smart to go back to that. So, let's look at this price drop with amazement. I believe we'll be laughing about it by the end of the year when Bitcoin goes near vertical. That's how I see it. Keep an eye on Bank of New York Mellon. Keep an eye on BlackRock, which manages something like $8 trillion. Keep an eye on Morgan Stanley. Keep an eye on the status of Bitcoin ETFs in the United States. Understand, once you solve the custodial piece in the United States, once the institutional investors can simply put money in a Bitcoin ETF to gain Bitcoin exposure, once your local bank starts giving you the option of storing your wealth in Bitcoin, I believe the sky's the limit. That's how I see it. I've held Bitcoin for years. Folks, I plan to hold Bitcoin for many more years. Right? Let me just give you a story too. I'll, I'll close with this. I had a client. It was a legal matter. He just got some money. We were leaving court. Bitcoin was either at $9,000 or $11,000. So we were talking about what he was going to do with his mini financial windfall. And, you know, I said to the guy, hey, you know, you might want to consider throwing a small portion into Bitcoin. Right? We were just talking. And, of course, the guy, you know, was hesitant. He had heard a lot of loony things about Bitcoin. Um, you know, people were telling him this, that, and the other. He didn't know about it and stuff like that. So I was urging him. I said, look, you need to do your own research. You need to think for yourself. Folks, he would have tripled his money had he put it all in Bitcoin, right? Just, just food for thought, you know, educate yourself, figure things out when you're ready, make the move, but don't fall for the opinions of people like Nouriel Rabini or Nassim Taleb or tweets from Elon Musk. Everyone has their own agenda. You, in my opinion, should research, determine, and then follow yours. That's how I see it. This is a great time for crypto, folks. Just Google and research El Salvador and Paraguay, right? Understand what happens if Bitcoin starts appreciating in value. The political opposition to it is then going to weaken. Pay real close attention to El Salvador because I imagine a lot of legacy finance money is going to come in because they don't want Bitcoin to continue to eat away at their market share, right? Once El Salvador goes to sound money, I think things are going to change faster there than you can imagine. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.